How's everybody doing? I'll tell you, uh, obviously played a little bit better, played good enough to get a W. Uh, really excited about uh, our guys handling the pressures within the game. Um, thought our defense really played really good football, you know, put them in some tough situations during the course of the game, and they were able to get us out of it, you know, not giving away a bunch of points. So, uh, you know, still have a lot of work to do. Uh, you know, there's nothing in the winning formula that says you got to turn the ball over four times, you know, and, and try to win the ball game. So uh, we're going to go back to work with a clear head and try to put this one behind us, celebrate it because winning's hard, but put it behind us as fast as we can and get ourselves ready for Rutgers. Any you Stan, I'm kind of torn to ask you about EJ, like his accuracy versus his poise. Like, you know, what really stands out and what got him out there? You, you know, well, both both of those intangibles there uh, for EJ have stood out for a while now. You know, he, he, he's no secret to us as a football family. You know, but what EJ represents, quite honestly, is uh, when we sit there and we talk about uh, an opportunity to help the team win just by doing your job, just you know, taking your time, putting an investment into your your uh, your playbook, uh, your game plan, your, your teammates. That at any given point in time, your number could be called, and uh, you know, um, and, and all those guys have to be ready. You know, so it's a competitive environment that he thrived in, and today just so happens to be, you know, his number was called today. You know, but uh, along with. Him came uh, Jim Two and Donaldson Two offensive linemen that had to get in the ball game and you know finish the game off for us. So again, those are three guys, uh, three good examples of uh, when you put in work and you prepare the proper way. Uh, when your numbers call, you can have an opportunity to help us win ball games. So well, you need to go to uh, EJ at that point in the game. Well, you know, I just felt that uh, you know two two balls on the ground, you know, is something that you know. Uh, you think about and you, you know, those are tough decisions when it's your quarterback, but, you know, I just thought that, uh, you know, two two balls on the ground was something that probably forced me to that decision. Will the Blue League have your starter going forward or is that to be determined? Oh, we go back to work and, you know, I, I love these depth chart questions, you know what I mean? You know, <laughs> you know and, and the answer is going to be the same, you know. Um, you may be a starter, you know, for three quarters of a football game, but every day you have to go and earn that. Every day we, we try to create a competitive environment where, you know, you earn it, you know, and um, if you have it, it's not guaranteed to you tomorrow. If you show up one day and have a bad day. And again, the reason why we think like that is, you know, we're trying to take on the iron shoppers, iron mentality and create a competitive environment in units. And uh, that's how we believe here at Temple that players elevate their level of play. Stan, uh, 23 rushing yards in the second half after the rushing game was going in the first half. What adjustments did Lafayette make that really shut that down? Well, Lafayette, uh, you know, you do your homework. They, they were already a, a run-stopping defense. I mean, they're, they're tough to, to, to deal with. I mean, they, they bring the mic, they bring free safety pressure, they move the front, and they're a tenacious bunch of guys, you know. Um, you know, but, um, you know, hey, we, you know, um, we had to make some adjustments up front. We had to make some adjustments. You know, we had to put some guys in, and you know, we had a rhythm going there in the first half. And when you got to, you know, put a couple of guys in the ball game, it's, you know, you got to fight to get that rhythm back. And um, so I would, I would attribute that to, to the lack of production in the second half. Stan, another good week for Jose. Eight catches, 118 yards. What did you see from him this week? That, uh, well, this week in practice, that translated onto the field today. You know. Jose, along with the whole entire unit, they were disappointed about their performances the week before, you know, and uh, they went out with the, with the mindset to get better, you know, and to push each other, to hold each other accountable. And, uh, you know, we still got some work to do in that department, you know, but when you put the proper investment in, the proper preparation in, uh, you tend to get a better result. And I think Jose was an example of that. You talked about, your oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, you can talk. Um, the rush defense is really crucial. Lafayette really could run the ball last week and in today. How crucial is that for again to win today? That's huge. You know, anytime you got a run stopping defense, and uh, you know, and, and not only that, be put into some tough situations. I mean, we we did not give them great field position. You know, and uh, I thought they played lights out in the run game, and 
the one thing that was different from a week ago was just the, the trigger, meaning that they didn't hesitate. You know, they, they, they felt like, they looked like they had a better understanding of the system and they just had a mindset to trigger and, and, and get the ball down to the ground. And uh, uh, that's very exciting to see. Stan, I think, I think Devon Fox in the spring game was your leading receiver. I haven't seen him get in the game at receiver yet, but it seems like he's he likes the role that he has there. I don't know, man. He, he's doing a pretty good job blocking the, the, the ball right now. But, you know, here's the deal with that. You know, um, he's a very unselfish football player. He's finding his role on this football team. Today it was on pump block. You know, tomorrow it could be at receiver. You know, it's just, it all depends on his his development and his mindset. But, uh, no, he, he was definitely impactful today in what we asked him to do on special teams, and he enjoys it. He's bought into that. I mean, that's a part of the game that's important, and he's making it his deal. How much of a lift out of that punt block skip you? Because the game was pretty tight at that point, and he allowed, you know, like, a lot of momentum to shift back to, to tempo. It's huge because it's, you know, it's a battle of field position when you're talking special teams, right? The field shifts so much. So many yards are shifted. And uh, for some time there, you know, we, we felt Lafayette had the momentum going. You know, again, they, they did get a little bit more style against our run game. And uh, we had to find a way to create field position, you know, and uh, those block punts put us in favorable positions for points. So that's the reason why we called them. And uh, actually, the last pump block, um, I don't think that was actually a pump. He, he just kind of came, I mean, a, a call block. Uh, he actually just came clean on it. You know, he got in the rhythm of it. But, um, you know, yeah, he's, he's, he's special at it. But we call those type of plays to establish field position. Stan, talk about the job that Coach Elliott has done with that defense as far as you look at the linebackers now. There's four guys who either had sack or a tackle for loss, whereas I know you weren't here and don't want to adjust too much of last season. The last season, getting to the quarterback was an issue. Linebacker play wasn't the strongest, and then put on a performance like today, and some glimpses of potential last week against Duke. Yeah, you know, well, he, the one thing I love about DJ, he's found a way to get what he wants to get done as a play caller, but keep it simple for our young men. You know, uh, they're playing fast. It's because he's kind of kept it simple for them. <laughs> They, they, they've uh, bought into uh, the culture that he's trying to create there on the defense. You know? So it's very exciting when you can get TFL sacks and, and things of that sort, uh, no question about it. Um, but the fact that, like you said, when there's numerous people that are starting to show up in those stats that way, that means that they've all bought in. He's found a, a, a great formula to keep it as simple so they can play uh, cut loose football. Was EJ, you know, fair to say, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, he was number two? Because you're only repping so many guys in practice, right? Right, yeah. He, he, he was repping the two reps, for sure. Any idea, Adam and Richrod, if significant, or the injuries? No, I don't know anything about that uh, right now. I hadn't had a chance to talk to our trainer, so I'm, I'm hoping they're okay. Um, about your penalties, you did only have a little bit of one drive on the offense where you can't have two penalties, but last week you had a couple drive killings, pass interference, and holdings. How nice is it to see them play pretty much a clean defensive game today? Uh, you're talking about offense? Just both sides of the ball, only oh, two penalties today. Yeah, so. well, yeah, regarding penalties, it's always good to, to, to you know, not self-inflict, you know, go backwards that way. But um, outside the penalties, for the four turnovers are just shining so bright in my, in my head right now, you know. And uh, those are the things that lose ball games usually, you know. So, yeah, the fact that we're not – you know, that we don't have a double-edged sword that way. It's just pretty cool. But uh, the fact that we got, you know, four times we're turning the ball over to the other team is not very good. No questions?